Welcome to this course on Real Analysis. My name is Jay Krishnan and I am an assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Palaka. I work in complex analysis, which is a sequel to real analysis. Real analysis is the study of the theory behind calculus. Calculus is undoubtedly one of the greatest creations of the human mind. Calculus is used everywhere in science, engineering and even in the humanities. From astronomy and anthropology all the way up to zoology, calculus is used extensively. Modern physics would simply be impossible without calculus. Since the tools of calculus are used so extensively, it is vital that these tools are rigorously verified. Without such verification, there could be catastrophic consequences like the collapse of a suspension bridge or the explosion of a space shuttle. Real analysis provides the theoretical justification for calculus. Calculus studies the how, whereas real analysis studies the why. In this course, we shall study real analysis assuming a minimum of prerequisites. I expect you to have a strong foundation in one variable calculus as presented in high school. So I urge you to download the NCRT textbooks from NCRT's website for the 11th and 12th standard mathematics and be thorough with that. Apart from that, a basic course in multivariable calculus as done in undergraduate studies will prove to be useful but is not strictly needed. Regarding the target audience for this course, this course is primarily aimed at mathematics majors, people who are in their second years pursuing a BSc in mathematics. However, as should be clear from the remarks I made about the use of calculus in science and engineering, anyone who wants to get into the guts of what drives modern science and technology could benefit from taking this course. In particular, people who are interested in pursuing theoretical computer science economics or theoretical physics could greatly benefit from this course. Again, the prerequisites are minimum. Just 11th and 12th standard calculus is more than enough. Regarding the course content, since this is supposed to be a basic course, I will start from scratch. We will first see some basics of set theory and logic. Our development will not be complete. I shall be very brief simply because I am going to take it for granted that you have learnt it in 11th and 12th. After we study the basics of set theory and logic, we shall proceed to take an axiomatic development of the real numbers. In school, you have seen real numbers as infinite decimal expansions. We will see why that viewpoint is not exactly adequate for the purposes of calculus. We shall develop axiomatically what the real numbers are and study the most important properties of real number, real numbers, including what is called completeness. Once we are done the, with that, we will proceed to the first topic of analysis, which is sequences and series. Uh, let me just make a few remarks about series, which you have already seen in your school. Series is a very, very useful computational tool, especially for computing things like trigonometric functions, logarithms, or exponentials. Having studied sequences and series, or more precisely, having studied convergence, which is the central topic of real analysis, we shall adopt the ideas that we have so far learnt and study limits and continuity of functions. Continuous functions are actually a new innovation. Derivatives came much before continuity. One of the reasons is because to define functions precisely, we need the modern notations from set theory, which we have already seen earlier in the course. Once we define precisely what a function is, we can start talking about continuous functions. We will see the various properties of continuous functions and we will understand that to study continuous functions, it is often useful to study the structure of sets 
of real numbers. More precisely, we will study what are known as open sets and closed sets and properties defined using open sets and closed sets. We will soon see that many properties of continuous functions like continuous function on a closed interval attains its maxima and minima. A continuous function on a closed interval has the intermediate prop value property. All of these are consequences of the structure of sets of in, in the real numbers, the so-called topology of the real numbers. After studying topology and continuous functions, we will study derivatives, the various properties of derivatives and the common theorems such as the mean value theorem. After this, we shall study the opposite of differentiation, which is integration. We will see the Riemann integral defined as the limit of a particular sum. Then we will see that this sum measures the area under the graph. After which we will prove the fundamental theorem of calculus, which actually establishes that integration is the reverse of differentiation. Once this is done, we will study some properties of sequence and series of functions. So this is the rough outline of what is going to be covered in this course. Regarding textbooks and references, I shall be providing lecture notes for each lecture. So a textbook is not strictly necessary. However, if you wish to purchase a textbook, I recommend two of them, one at a more basic level and one a more advanced textbook. The basic textbook is called Understanding Analysis by Stephen Abbott. It's an excellent book. If you want a more comprehensive book, you can look at Introduction to Mathematical Analysis by Tom Apostol. This is a classic book. Many generations of mathematicians have learned from this book. In this course, you are going to be exposed to proof writing. Since it's not possible in a massive uh, online course to evaluate all proofs, what I shall do is, I shall leave it to you to write down complete proofs in each assignment. But few questions from the assignment will have fill in the blank type questions and multiple choice questions where you have to complete a proof which has some blanks. These will be evaluated. This is to make sure that you get adequate practice. Learning mathematics just by sitting in a lecture or reading is like trying to learn how to swim by watching Michael Phelps swim. It's simply not possible. You have to dive into the water and drown sometimes to learn the intricacies of proof writing. Hopefully you will have a good experience in this course. I wish you all the best. Thank you.